Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new section of the course we are going to introduce some of the most commonly used Angular material form controls and we are going to start in this lesson with what is probably the most used form control of all, I am talking about the plain input text field. This is one of the most flexible and configurable form fields that we have available and it's what gives many of our Angular Material applications that typical look and feel given the floating placeholder of the input text that makes this type of component ideal for both mobile and desktop applications. You will notice that in desktop applications many times you have the label of the form field next to the form field with the material input component the label is part of the field and it will float out of the way when the user starts typing it. Let's see it in action. We are going to implement it here in our multi-step form here on step one of our component. Now if you notice the initial skeleton of this component where we are going to be demonstrating the angular material input field, this just contains here a very simple angular reactive form. We have here a couple of fields, namely the title, this is a required field with a minimum length and a maximum length, we have a date that we are going to be using to demonstrate the date picker, a couple of multi-choice fields to demonstrate the radio button and the select drop-down, one field for checkboxes and another for text areas. In this lesson we are going to focus on the input text component. So let's start by adding a new form field here to our form template. We are going to do that using the material form field directive. This is a container directive that is going to allow us to customize the look and feel of the form field as we will see in a moment. Inside it we are going to add a plain angular HTML element. Now if you just leave this element as it is, it won't be an angular material input. In order to turn it into one you need to add the mat input directive. Now let's go ahead and let's add it a placeholder. Let's add here the text course title. Let's link back this input to our form, to this property here, the title property, using for example the form control name directive. And we're going to link this to the title field. Before showing the many customization options that we have for the plain input field, let's go ahead and see this simple example in action here on a separate screen. So as we can see we have here the input field, we can see here the placeholder, so this looks like a plain input field but notice that if you click on it the placeholder is going to float to the top and become here minimized. We can now enter here the title of the course, for example Angular for Beginners and when we click away from the field the placeholder is going to remain here in its floated position. If we remove now the content of the field, the field is going to get marked in red as expected and we can see here that the placeholder is going to float back to the input box. As we can see this makes it very simple to make responsive forms because we don't have the label of the field next to the input box. This property comes in very handy for building responsive forms because for example imagine that using here the Chrome Dev Tools we switch here to a mobile device. We can do so by using here the toggle device bar and then you can switch here to a phone for example this one and put it on portrait mode. So here the input field is occupying almost the full width of the device. You can see here that having the placeholder float to the top makes it very convenient to build responsive forms because imagine what it would be to have this placeholder here occupy this much space and then we would only have this remainder space for the input field itself. By using angular material form fields this is one less thing that we need to worry about while building responsive forms. You will notice that the input field has this typical angular material look and feel where the input field does not have here any border around it. Now although this field is very convenient maybe you want to change this typical default material appearance and you can do so in the following way by going back here to our code base. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this form field and I'm going to provide here another version of it with a different appearance. So the matform field directive has here a property called appearance 
and you can switch it to multiple options. So you have the fill appearance and you also have the outline appearance. So in order to demonstrate the three different appearances, I'm going to put them here side by side for comparison. Normally, of course, we wouldn't do this. We wouldn't link multiple inputs to the same form property. So this is just to see the different appearances in action. So as we can see, we have here the standard angular material appearance without any border. We can see here the fill appearance. We can see that there is a slight background fill to our input box. And we have here the outline where we can see clearly an input border. So I'm going to type in here some text in all three fields so that we can see what they look like with some input filled in. So as we can see, in this case, it has the advantage that the placeholder will float to the top, making it easy for the user to know what the field is about. And in the other two cases, the placeholder has disappeared. As you can see, the default appearance is slightly more user-friendly because the user can still know what the field is about. The presence of the visible placeholder really helps out the user to understand a more complex Ford with a ton of different fields and options available. So let's then go back here to our code base. We're going to remove these two alternative appearances and let's now see what options we have available for customizing the behavior of this material input field. First of all, let's talk about the positioning of the floating label. So by default, the placeholder is going to float if you type some text on the field. Otherwise, the placeholder will remain in its natural place in a non-floated state. You can control this behavior using here the float label property of the material form field directive. So for example, let's say that you want to see the label always floated. You can set this property to always. Let's see what this looks like. So as we can see, the label is always floated independently if you have typed text in here or not. If we click away from it, we can see that this remains on the floated state. This might be useful for some fields, but on the other hand, you might want to ensure that the label never floats. You can do that by setting this property to never. Let's have a look at this in action. So as we can see, the label is currently not floating. And if we type in here something, the label is still not being shown. If you want to restore the default behavior for the label, you can also set here the property to auto or simply remove it and auto will be the default value. Another very useful feature of the material input field is the ability to add suffixes and prefixes to the form field. So let's say, for example, that this is a phone number field and we would like to add here, for example, a prefix for a given country. We can do so by using here the mat prefix directive. In a very similar way, we can add here a suffix by using mat suffix. Let's say that this is a monetary field that we want to end with dot zero zero. Let's have a look at this in action. As we can see, we have here the prefix and the suffix as expected. And this is part of the field. It's embedded inside the content of the input field. Besides suffixes and prefixes, we might also want to add an informative note below the input field. We can do so very easily by using the mat hint directive. This can be used to add any complementary information that you want about the field. You can set its alignment. I'm going to put it to the bottom end of the field. So in our case, I'm going to use it to display how many characters the user has already typed in here. If we check here the definition of our form field, we are going to see that the title field has a maximum length of 60 characters. So we are going to display that here as a input hint. For that, let's start by giving here a name to the title field. Let's call it simply title. And now we can use this reference to the title input to display here some text. Let's display the length of the string that the user has already typed. We access the title field. So here we are accessing the actual input element because this is not an Angular component. 
so we can access the value string and from there we can grab the length and this is the length that the user has already typed out of a maximum of 60 characters let's have a look at this in action so switching here to a larger window let's start typing here our title notice that we are at zero of 60 characters if we start typing we are going to see that our material hint is adapting to the content of the text and if we keep typing we are going to reach the 60 characters so everything is working as expected and this is a very typical example of how to use the material hint directive but you could use this to display any helpful text that you want to associate to this particular field one thing that you don't want to use the material hint directive for is for displaying errors linked to the field so for that we have a separate directive which is the material error directive you can have as many material errors directives as you need for a given text field so one for each error in our case we are going to demonstrate here only one and let's link this to the minimum length requirement of the field so if the field has less than five characters and the user tabs away from the field then we want to show here an error message so i'm going to paste in here the error message it will say a minimum length of five characters is required now we don't want to show this all the time so let's add here an ng if condition we only want to show this if the error is active for this particular field and for that we are going to need to access the form field linked here to the title property we can access this form field by using this getter that we have here in our component skeleton so whenever we access this getter we are accessing the form we are accessing its controls and we are accessing the title control using the title control we are going to be able to determine if this particular error is active or not by accessing here the errors object from here we are going to check if the min length error is present notice that if the field is valid then there won't be any errors object so i'm using here this operator in order to avoid any error accessing here a property in an object that does not exist let's now check out this feature in action so if we start typing here in our field we are going to see that no error is being shown and this is normal we wouldn't want to confuse the user showing an error too early but if the user stops interacting with the field and clicks away from it then and only then the field is going to be marked in error and we can see here the corresponding error message now you can add as many messages as you want they will all show up here below the input field but typically you want to try to show only one error message at a time if you follow that rule then you can see that it's very easy to build responsive forms using this type of input fields and this is because the material field has reserved here the space for one and only one error message if you continue to type in the field until you reach the minimum length then the message is going to be immediately deleted so as you can see there are a ton of features for input fields these are the most typical components that we use in an angular material application in the sense that they are the most iconic with this floating placeholder system we are now going to cover a lot more form controls in the angular material library we are going to talk about in the next few lessons about for example radio buttons drop down boxes check boxes date pickers tooltips etc all the form controls that you need to build just about any application later on in the course we are going to move on to much more complex components such as for example data tables tree components we're going to talk about drag and drop responsive design custom themes and much more this is coming right up in the next few lessons